So if we look at recent successes within augmented reality product releases, we can, for one, look at Pokemon Go, which was 2016's summer smash hit uh, within <laughs> entertainment products that anyone could buy or actually purchase for free. And I think that's a great introduction for the mainstream public into how AR might change things in regards to what experiences you can expect to be taking part of in the future once this technology matures. We can also look at Apple's AR kit, which was recently released, and it basically shows what can be done if creative people get their hands on the tools to make something. And I think that's exactly where things will be going uh, as, as time passes by. We will see more and more really interesting experiences which showcase why we need this technology, why we need to escape from the 2D screen and go into spatial systems. So I think if we consider the smartphone as the most recent evolutionary shift in the interactive computer paradigm, where we went from abstract mouse cursor movements to haptic touch screens with vibration and accelerometers, we're now looking towards augmented reality where we're using gestures. We're, ba we're going past touch and actually grabbing, rotating, manipulating things. But when it comes to AR, we, in order to get to that point, we have some big hurdles to cross before. Uh, one thing is performance and another is size of the devices. There's battery capacity and there's the social value of wearing a head-mounted display that obscures your face. Uh, I think in order to make these devices smaller first and thereby more socially acceptable, we would probably have to lower the quality of the experience by making it simpler, uh, using less detailed 3D graphics, and that might actually hurt the overall experience and the ability to sell the product. This means that the experiences that we're going to be seeing on these devices will have to be uh, not like the stuff we see in science fiction, it has to make sense. It has to be something tangible for a non-expert. And we need to see clear and concise affordances presented by, by these applications, which will no doubt be developed. Uh, the AR company uh, Meta released a set of spatial design guidelines, which I have been following in my own prototyping attempts. I decided to develop the foundational features of a spatial 3D system which could be employed by professionals in the architectural field, um, seeing as this is a profession which relies heavily on models, prototyping, small adjustments, and basically presenting to clients who may not be um, professionally competent in, in architecture. So you have to really explain it so that it makes sense to them. Um, so I chose Piaki Ingels Group for, the, for this example project because I think they, they show a general openness and interest in um, what is utopian, innovative, sustainable and unconventional approaches to selling a concept within the, the reins of architecture. I think what sets Jack Engels Group, apart from their competitors, is that they are incredibly efficient at communicating their vision and ideas. Bjarke Engels himself has done several TED Talks in which he shows what his practice is all about. Uh, and he shares his ideas with slide after slide illustrating what he's talking about and somehow it makes sense to non-experts. Several of Bjarke Engels Group's uh, project presentations are actually AR inspired, um, but they take the form of choreographed 3D animation where everything is post-produced basically, so it only seems like they're interactive. This is where I see the opportunity for a company like Autodesk maybe to develop AR compatible software adapting their current applications to spatial workflows, making Bjarke Ingels Group's visual approach uh, possible reality so that it wouldn't be post-produced but they would actually be able to to walk around the models and squash them if they feel like it and see the whole thing simulated in front of them. I looked at Bjarke Ingels Group's current project for uh, the World Trade Center building number two with the intent of using it as a 3D prototype that they could be working on. 
uh, and manipulating in a, an AR application. So I talked to a few architects here at Ravensbourne and based on those conversations, I basically attempted to prototype a few uh, schemes which would be both easy to comprehend and more directly they would be efficient uh, more so than a traditional interface full of drop-down menus and basically hidden options that you would have to know where are. The benefit of AR is that with all the visible space around the user acting as a potential placeholder for UI elements, screen constraints are no longer a problem. We can surround the user with information and tools now and I mean, one example was a scaling function where I figured that maybe the building should be possible to survey from any angle, time of day, ratio of a full city skyline or singled out and alone. Or you could perhaps, you could even zoom in and have the model adapt, your visual input would adapt based on what scale you were looking at. Uh, you could go all the way into the maintenance uh, section where you could see what's inside the walls, what is the structure of this building in case of an earthquake. Uh, you have to think of all these details for when you're building a building. So I was trying to, to think of one tool to cover very many functions in one. It seems almost inconvenient to be looking at augmented reality as a prospective new way of interacting with computers if we consider how good we have become at designing for and using 2D systems. Uh, we're basically looking at the computer all over again. So if it becomes the new mainstream approach to, to using a tool, we just may have to relearn everything. We have to build everything once again. But the good thing is that we already have the idea of what the tool should do, we just need to adapt it. And that's the difficult part. How do you visualize that stuff? I think professional practice is definitely the place to begin because we can start creating tools that can create other tools or experiences for people to experience. And I mean, if it works, it works. We keep on growing, we keep on iterating, and new stuff comes out all the time. So I guess it's time to test if augmented reality can actually survive.